exercise and movement. So this is again requirement for health. You know. Now unfortunately, and this is it's not always a good thing to say, but movement is not required, required to live now. You don't have to walk to the shops. Uh, you don't need to take the stairs. You know, we, food, modern living is very convenient, which is lovely, but the downsides of that. So one lady I work with, she's 98, and she says, all old people should exercise. And she said, all old people should go to the gym. Because in her generation, you know, washed everything by hand, and you went to the shops. Every I mean, people pay us. You know, farmer's walks is where you pick up the weights and you walk around with them. People pay us to do that. People used to do it every day with shopping. You know, people pay us for that. So living now, we don't need to exercise as part of a daily lifestyle, but we do need it for health. Okay, this, you can get around it. You never used to, to get around it. So I'm breaking this up into sort of four main areas. And this really isn't going to take us long to cover. Activity and exercise, in my view, are not the same thing. Now, these are a bit blanket terms, but I think they're incredibly helpful. Everyone needs to do 10,000 steps a day. I think that's a very, very good starting point because I see people that go to the gym every day after work. They sit all day driving to meetings or on the train or in offices and they sit and they might go to the gym every day and do good workouts. But they've got problems because they're not active. <coughs> okay, you're exercising, but you're not active. So the 10,000 steps a day are, are a very good goalpost. Now, some people can't do that to start with. Most people will get to that at some point. But that's become a requirement. So that's why the fitness trackers are useful. Um, you're just monitoring that. One caveat of that is if you get a fitness tracker, a fitness tracker should make you better change it. I have people say, oh, I've got a Fitbit for my birthday. I go, how many steps do you do today? And I go, oh, like you know, 2,000 steps a day. I go, should you do more? And I went, no. I go, well, what's the point of having it? <laughs> you might use it as a, as a milestone. So I've got people that do that and they know, oh, that loop takes me about there. I can tie that with work and I get active. But we need to, need to be active. Now, earlier we briefly mentioned about calorie in versus calorie out. And I do agree if you're looking to lose weight, you need to go in some sort of calorie deficit the right way. All the stuff we said, not cut the fats out, not cut the proteins, put the right type of carbs and all the fats and proteins, balance your blood sugars. And yes, you can go into a calorie deficit easily. But the reality is, if you're sitting and you're walking less than sort of three, you know, really much less than 10,000, but if you're doing like 3,000 steps a day, you probably could eat one small meal a day and be over your calories. If you're, it's like having your computer on doing nothing, just sitting there. If you are sitting, unfortunately, you can't eat diddly squat because that's your body don't need that. You know? So it's fine if you don't like food and you just want one small little chicken salad, but you need the movement. And it's not because you're walking around burning all these calories off. You're firing the metabolism up. You're firing the immune system. Uh, the the metab you know, metabolism, immune system, the endocrine system, all the systems are firing up. So that's why people say, oh, I'm walking 10,000 steps a day. I'm doing the same amount of exercise I was before, and now the weight's falling off. And I go, you're not burning the calories off. You've got your body in the fact that it needed fuel. So again, so many people are way over their calories because they don't factor in activity. It doesn't have to be walking, but it's a very easy way. People are doing gardening all day and always here, here, here. But then you need to converse these, balance it out with structured exercise. So I see people that they do walking all the time and you know always off around like Hadley Castle and places like that. If they don't do stretching, which we'll come into, they've all come to me because they get shin splints and tendonitis because they never stretch out anything. But they're active all the time. But they show very clear signs of lack of structured exercise. See, to me, if an exercise is done correctly, if I'm not talking about bad exercises, there is no such thing as a bad exercise if it's done correctly. However, there is poorly prescribed exercises. Okay? So a lot of people, when they get into exercise, and the first thing they do is join classes. They've never had an assessment. Not, I mean, how can you do a core conditioning class if someone hasn't tested your core? You know? How can you do a deadlift correctly if someone doesn't know, should you have your pelvis that way or that way? Because they're very different. So people go into a class, just knock their pipe out, and you see this thing of people working at maximum intensity, which stresses all the body. The body essentially has is, is been traumatized, like it's gone through, a, it's been hit by a truck. The body's not going to recover well from that. Exercise, by definition, is constructive trauma. You strain the body in a way that it stimulates certain things to happen, and your diet and lifestyle is in place so that it recovers, and you're more supple, or you're stronger. So if you want to work on someone's heart, you do quite intense exercise and you let the heart rate return back to normal. Okay? You don't put someone on a treadmill for an hour. Okay? And it improves the heart health, lung health. You know, we have movement patterns. So if we see someone who's quite frail and maybe had looking to do things like fall prevention, we'll give them squats. 
We'll give them uh, lunges because, I mean, how do you get off the floor if you cannot do a single body weight lunge? You cannot get off the floor. These chairs, everyone's hips are about 90 degrees. How can you get out of a chair if you can't do a 90 degree squat? Now, you don't need to have you know, 400 kilos on your back, but you should be able to move your own body. So this is why you assess people. So if you struggle to get out of a chair, is it just that your legs are weak? Is it that you've got poor balance? Is it your knees are too tight and you, can't, you, know, you haven't got the flexibility in the ankles or something? So people must have structured exercise. In my view, people, as a general guideline, people walk 10,000 steps a day and work out three times a week. And it's proper selection. I'm not saying you've got to come and see us. We do a program where we assess people and design them one-to-one -one programs. We train them one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. But there are things like that available, but definitely not just sort of go and use random equipment. You have to have a proper assessment design, proper exercise, you need to do it three times a week. But daily stretching. So everything sounds like, oh, it's more and more to do. But I can just say from experience, I mean, we assess people so you don't have to stretch everything. If you're super bendy, you need to only stretch a few muscles, okay? If you're stiff as a ball, you need to stretch quite a bit. Okay? If your joints are too stiff, every time you move it's like that, your program will probably be over 50% flexibility work. Posture work. Okay? So, in most cultures, uh, Eastern cultures, there's time out in their day just to unwind. And we tend to tie people, we tell people to tie that with stretching. So before they go to bed, they do 15 minutes stretching. It aligns the body. They sleep like that. And all we do is we then assess and say, you need to stretch your hamstrings, you need to stretch your hip, you need to do your ankle and stuff. But if you want to feel well, it really is important to have that, have that flexibility there. Okay, so activity, structured exercise, daily stretching, and then conversely, we need to have the rest in place, the wind down, the uh, not too stimulating, the calm things down. A bit like if we have a little kid, we calm things down in the household. Okay, but these things really make such a difference. When you look at people that live long, healthy lives, people live into their hundreds. There is a definite formula there. 